Good afternoon. I'm Steve Bassnett, and along with Aaron Marsden, I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of Canasa and Security Canada to our weekly online learning session. Before we begin, a little uh, shameless self-promotion for our Security Canada's first virtual trade show on December 2nd and 3rd. You can register for free at securitycanada.com. I would like to say a special thank you today to Cambium Networks for their support and sponsoring today's session. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing Saqid Ahmed, Vice President of Cambium Networks. Saqid is the Vice President for EPMP Solutions and has worked in the wireless industry for over 20 years and holds a Bachelor of Education, sorry, a Bachelor, bachelor of Electrical Engineering from the University of Tulsa in Oklahoma. You can tell I don't hold one. Feel free to type any questions you may have for Saki during the session into the Q&A window at the bottom of your screen, and he will respond during the Q&A portion roughly 20 minutes from now. I will now turn the session over to Saki. Welcome, and thanks for being here. Hey, Steve. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for that uh, introduction. Uh, good thing I ended up uh, getting an education after all, right? <laughs> Um, anyway, um, first and foremost, uh, thank you to Canasa uh, for uh, allowing us to do this um, presentation. Um, as Steve uh, introduced me, uh, Sakita Med from Cambium Networks. Um, before I get into the topic of our presentation today, I do want to uh, uh, share a little bit about uh, who Cambium Networks is. Uh, especially for those of you who are uh, in the security industry, you may not have heard about Cambium Networks. Um, and so with that, I will go ahead and uh, share my screen and um, kind of walk us through a little presentation to keep the conversation flowing. Um, so first and foremost, Cambium Networks uh, has been around for a while. Uh, we uh, were part of Motorola Solutions, uh, a company based out of the US here. Uh, in 2011, we split away and became uh, Cambium Networks. Uh, recently in uh, 2019, we uh, became a public company. Um, so Cambium Networks, even as part of Motorola and, and today as it stands, um, is an expert in wireless products. Um, our products are designed uh, from the ground up uh, with a proprietary technology, whether it's uh, tweaking the over the air protocol or a customization of hardware with uh, uh, special antennas and whatnot. That's kind of our core expertise. And these products, um, are sold everywhere. Uh, a lot of it is in Canada, targeting the uh, service provider market and specifically the wireless service provider market. And that also spans between um, internet service providers that are regional, local uh, to large uh, carriers and telcos. So that's sort of our uh, main heritage. Uh, we are in um, uh, numerous countries in terms of business. Uh, headquartered in Chicago, but uh, 700 plus employees in six continents with R&D uh, centers in various places. Um, our solutions, as I said, is in the service provider market, but also spans into uh, things like enterprise Wi-Fi and whatnot. So that's kind of who Cambium Networks is at a glance. You might wonder why I'm talking about uh, internet service provider market products to a security industry. Um, and that kind of will show you um, in this next slide. While the products are geared towards um, sending data for uh, broadband, let's say, um, they are very, very well suited for uh, video surveillance backhaul. And that is really the reason I'm sitting here and talking to you about our latest product uh, platform called C Envision. What you see in this picture is something you might be familiar with. The deployment of cameras in an outdoor environment, parking lot, garages, school, uh, uh, campuses, municipalities. Um, we have a pretty big presence internationally. A lot of these products are, as you can see, in major cities uh, backhauling the outdoor video camera. Anywhere where you have a, uh, a fiber issue where you don't have fiber access or you need to dig a trench, uh, that's where this comes in. What we have done is while we have products that are out there deployed uh, doing backhaul for CCTV, um, we've taken some of the under the hood technology that makes it very robust and resilient and created a very simplified portfolio. Uh, what we want to do is take this wireless solution, uh, make it an easier to understand, a significantly more integrated solution with the CCTV uh, components, 
um, and make it um, reach a much wider audience of security integrators. Because today, uh, most security integrators in our research, um, they're experts on cameras. Uh, they understand cameras. They understand uh, how to get the field of view, calculate NVR uh, capacities. Where things are a bit more challenging is networking is easy, but radio frequency, the idea of uh, planning for capacity when you put up a camera, how much throughput do I get in a, in a, in a link? Um, so that's the mystery that we're solving by taking something very complex and simplifying it under a portfolio called C and Vision. And I'm gonna get into that here, do some demos for you and um, through a video and, and show you what the key differentiation is and how we integrate and how it's simplified. So why wireless? Um, this is, uh, it it's should be obvious, um, but I wanna spend a few minutes on this. Uh, first and foremost, um, I'm a wireless guy. But at the same time, if I, if I can have wire and if I can have fiber for my internet connection, I'll take that any day. Um, that is just the reality. But the other reality, more so than ever, is that the wired connection is not available everywhere. Um, think of your uh, home and uh, what kind of internet services you get uh, through your local provider uh, and how many months and years you may wait for an upgrade to the, the, the connectivity to fiber or a better DSL. Same situation. If you are a system integrator, if you are a camera vendor, you're trying to do projects, you want to sell services, but ultimately you want to complete that project and move on to the next project. So the time to deploy, the time to finish the project, come in competitively from a pricing perspective are super important. So wireless is a key, key component to that. Uh, so whether it's labor costs, whether it's the time to install, whether it's the permit, the delays, a lot of that can be avoided when you're about to deploy video cameras in an outdoor environment by choosing wireless. Having said that, wireless have had its uh, bad uh, reputation to some extent, um, which is that I've got this great camera feed, super critical uh, video feed, and I'm going to send this over something I can't touch and feel. What is this wireless business, right? Um, and that can be an issue, uh, as well as the fact that at one point, maybe 10, 12 years ago, uh, Wi-Fi was seen as the only thing that's wireless. Uh, the audience in a security environment are not familiar with the different solutions that vendors offer in terms of proprietary solutions, customized stuff that can help you uh, to make a very robust wireless link. Uh, people have tinkered with meshing solutions with Wi-Fi. All of that is just going to cause problems down the road as the next Starbucks fires up uh, their Wi-Fi or somebody throws a outdoor Wi-Fi unit. Um, so this is where we get uh, pretty sophisticated and this is a bit of a technical slide, but important uh, in itself is that unlike the Wi-Fi stuff, we are not contention based, we're deterministic. So it's a proprietary protocol that will send that data um, when it needs to, the ranges are a lot longer. Uh, we do quality of service, uh, ruggedization, and multiple cameras on these links because we're very efficient in terms of performance um, as well as uh, with interference. The bottom two items are also very key is that we uh, uh, have some integration uh, and you'll see a video of this with uh, OnWiv client that uh, allows us to discover video streams and give you additional troubleshooting points. Um, and then last but not least, the backhaul solution we're talking about here today uh, integrates with leading video management systems. And this is super exciting because it takes a, 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 a essentially a dummy backhaul to a very smart backhaul because it will give you statistics to the same single pane of glass that you're using for your uh, video management system or camera network. Uh, so that's why uh, it's important to spend a few minutes here and how we are different than what you may be familiar with in terms of basic uh, Wi-Fi based solutions. With that, uh, let me see if I can uh, move my, okay, there you go. Let's move this out to the bottom. This is a little bit of a busy slide, but let me walk you through real quick. This is essentially the portfolio. It's five SKUs today, soon to have a sixth member join the family, um, but things are called hubs and clients. Uh, clients, exactly what you think they are. They are the guy that's gonna have the camera dangling from the switch on the pole, while the hub is the aggregator. Uh, so we have two hubs, one that's 360 degree coverage, which is easy. 
um, car dealership, you don't want to worry about, uh, you know, finding narrow angles. Uh, you want to cover as wide an angle, 120 degree coverage area, you put up a Hub 360. You go with a FlexR, which is a flexible model in the very far left column. Um, you're able to add third party antennas and create different beam patterns and create narrow uh, directional uh, sectors to uh, light up a street, for example, and put up cameras along the way. The three my, uh, clients are essentially micro mini max are uh, denoting different ranges and it really has to do with antenna gain. Um, I won't get into it too deep, but it's giving you options to have something like a micro, which is the size of a iPad mini, uh, while um, you've got a client mini slightly bigger than a max are with a higher gain and a few extra features. Um, so this is sort of the skew uh, count or view of the hardware portfolio. Um, deployment example, this is if you're not familiar with the wireless side of uh, CCTV deployment, you know, you really create these 60 degree, 30 degree coverage areas, you put the client and as you can see, right below the client, you'll typically have a switch and you'll add your cameras. Uh, we have a calculator tool, which I will show here in a few minutes that will show you how to uh, figure out how much bandwidth you will need. And, and that's one of the big mysteries we solve between wireless and uh, video backhaul. Um, moving on, you know, 360 on the left-hand side, you can see a bunch of clients are attached with cameras below them. On the right-hand side, you can take one of these clients, configure that as a hub, uh, so it changes its identity via software, and you can use a 30-degree coverage area and put up some other clients and add cameras to the bottom of that. So lots of flexibility. All the flexibility, all the throughput, like 600 megabit uh, peak capacity, all of this is license-free. You buy the hardware, you get everything. Um, and two very, very key differentiators for us, along with the technical stuff, is the fact that we have a three-year warranty and 24-7 uh, support. Uh, right now, we're assisting, uh, along with our distributor in Canada, Alliance, uh, we're working on projects where we're helping do some initial planning. People are coming to us with a Google map saying, hey, I need to put camera here, 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 here. What do you guys recommend? We'll spend a little time, lay it out for them, and propose a bill of material. So we're ready to do that as well. So it's, it's a very customer-oriented uh, uh, approach to help you guys uh, with projects. You can also do simple point to point, won't get into too much, but uh, one mile, four mile, eight mile connection. Last but not least, um, we talked about sixth uh, member joining the family, and this is going to be a, a Max RP product with the power out options. Um, so you can put in a, a 60 watt power supply that comes with the box and allow you to power cameras, IoT devices, uh, access control mechanisms that are standard PoE based without having to run additional PoE and additional cabling. Um, but this will be available publicly uh, in, in Q4, or, or distributors will have it in their hands, um, and uh, you know should be an exciting product to uh, complement the rest of the portfolio. With that, uh, let me uh, move to a quick video here because this is important. This is a user interface. I'm going to walk through this fast. We're logging in very quickly. Uh, once we log in, you're seeing this dashboard of a download speed, upload speed. You'll see some critical information. Um, over here where my mouse, hopefully you're able to see, uh, we have something called CN Vision detected cameras with a video stream button and a reboot uh, camera button. Um, and it shows a Higgvision Vision camera in here. And that essentially is the on wave function that's uh, discovering the camera. We click on video stream, we log in with the credentials of the camera. And after a few seconds of waiting, the video feed from the camera is uh, rebroadcasted right in the product UI. Uh, why do we do this? Um, it's, a, it's an added function for troubleshooting. Um, if you look at a scenario where you're, uh, you've lost uh, maybe credentials or your VMS system is no longer seeing the camera that you've added, um, your reaction today may be, hey, let's send a truck over there and uh, take a look at the hardware and replace the unit. Um, what we're providing is a mechanism where without doing so, you can check up to the backhaul point and make sure everything is still good. Camera's up and running, the video feed is there. Um, and then you can look at the problem maybe more on the video management side. So that's the purpose of this. Uh, moving ahead to the next uh, uh, interesting feature is, on the next slide, what you see here is in the same user interface, I have scrolled down a little bit down to something called VMS integration. Um, and in this window, you see that there is an enable disable button and a VMS type. 
In this case, it happens to be a milestone XProtect, uh, your VMS IP address, port number, username, password, and an ability to generate a HTML link. Uh, when I click the play button on this demo, um, the drop-down menu has additional VMSs. But kind of fast forward for the sake of time and show you the gist of it is that we go ahead and um, head over to a milestone VMS. And then in the product itself, in the link, uh, we're going to go ahead and force a deregistration. So this is a scenario that is mimicking where your radio link completely, uh, oops, sorry about that, radio link uh, broke away. Um, and once that happens, just rewinding here a little bit and playing back. And once that happens in the milestone VMS right here, you're seeing a Camium Networks Hub Flexar uh, uh, message show up. This is a very, very uh, crucial differentiation because the way we have seen this space is the video management system is a crucial, crucial component uh, for a network that has multiple cameras. Um, if the backhaul products, which in this case happens to be wireless, um, needs a separate management system and uh, is unable to give you any type of statistics and alarms, um, then you, you really are troubleshooting two separate things. By having this integration, and this is not just with VM uh, Milestone, but various others, which I will show in a future slide, you're bringing intelligence into the single pane of glass of management. And that's allowing you to see um, the camera statistics right here on the VMS. Um, along with the statistics or the alarm in this case, the second thing that I will fast forward to is we saw this uh, H uh, HTML link, sorry, as I tried to pause the video, I'm accidentally clicking on the, uh, um, right. So here, what we're doing is we're actually taking that dynamic HTML link we generated. Um, the admin here is adding an entity and essentially creating a website. Um, and what that website is doing is allowing uh, this system, backhaul system, to push its information uh, right to the uh, VMS system. And let's just fast forward a little bit. And sorry, we're back to, uh, sorry, this is on Genetech side, I apologize. So this is what you kind of see. Um, Milestone Genetech both have the same functionality. You just go about it in a slightly different way. But what you're seeing here is a dynamic web page, which we can push to Milestone, Genetech, and other VMS vendors. And what it does is in a tile view, um, it will show you not just the camera feed, or you could have multiple camera feeds, but also a tile view that shows you, okay, this is what's going on with my camera. The IP address is this, it's up and running. So once again, a single place. Um, you see a bunch of cameras, but you see the corresponding backhaul. And in our product, we're always doing software updates. So um, there's lots of interesting advances since even these videos were captured. Uh, where you will see a uh, sequence of uh, tree hierarchy. So you'll be able to say, hey, this hub and this client has all these cameras attached to them. And again, all this is meant to present the wireless uh, as a much more integrated solution for your CCTV network, um, as well as give you those additional troubleshooting steps. Okay, uh, moving ahead, the one last thing, uh, this is uh, one, uh, on the VMS front, so Genetech, Milestone, NX uh, Network Optics, WiseNet, which is a Hanwha, Evigilon, Axis, um, Siemens, and we're looking at Video Insight for Panasonic. Uh, we're open to integrating with other VMS systems. If uh, there are requests out there, popular brands in Canada, uh, please shoot me an email, which you'll see here in a few slides later, uh, and let us know what else we can do. Uh, we realize the Dawa, Higvision, uh, Uniview are also popular brands. Um, needless to say, there's some challenges in the U.S. market against the Chinese brands, uh, and we are working on integrating some of the VMSs there, but it's not a high priority. It's uh, further down on the roadmap. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show before we move to Q&A and wrap up me talking is something called a companion tool, which you're able to download from our uh, support site. Um, again, if I click on the video properly this time, um, this tool essentially allows you to create a project. And in the project, you will uh, put in things like, hey, my hub is located at point X, Y, Z. My client is uh, distance is um, uh, 500 kilometer, the channel bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera. You click on some of that. Just basically set up your hub and client with very basic information. 
Uh, once you in, put in that information um, under the client, you're also able to go, and I'm gonna fast forward here real quick, um, adding a camera. So you're able to choose resolution, compression, frames per second, uh, lat long information of the camera under the client. Um, so this mimics a full setup that incorporates the video camera characteristics. Um, and what we're doing with all of this is we're calculating the throughput the camera needs based on what you just put in. And we're looking at the capability that we have in the radio. And we're gonna come out and tell you, hey, you're only utilizing 34% of your link capacity. So if you ever had that question in your mind, well, I'm putting up a backhaul, do I have enough performance to do this camera? This tool helps you answer that question. And we are conservative in our approach. We take into account things like line of sight, near line of sight, or interference levels. And, and those parameters, you know, we ask you not to put in complex numbers, but say, hey, this is an urban deployment or a semi-rural deployment, et cetera, et cetera. So this companion tool is a very powerful thing, completely free, lots of updates coming. In fact, the video here is a little old. The new uh, tool has even uh, more functionality added. Um, so that's a, that's a cool thing to check out. Moving on, um, as I mentioned on the right-hand side, the support, our three-year standard warranty, uh, huge things. We're doing some pre-planning along with Alliance, a uh, very strong partner of ours at, uh, in Canada. Um, and then Camium University, uh, we've got a, a couple of cool learning tools. So one of them is a uh, CN Vision certification where we actually go through some networking basics, RF basics, camera basics, and tie it all together. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable with uh, doing wireless for backhaul, this is a great class to take. Um, nobody else in the industry has a class like this, so I, uh, it's a good plug-in for that. And then needless is the support that I mentioned. Um, other than that, uh, pricing and things like that, um, we'll be happy to talk about that to our partners, but let's just say that you know, in order to build a you know, one mile link uh, with a pair of cameras, backhaul, whatever uh, megapixel, you're looking at sub $500 type pricing uh, for the link, meaning two radios. So we're very competitively priced uh, for the amount of features and things we're packing here. Um, and <clears throat> with that, I will wrap up this presentation and open it up for Q&A, just two minutes over my allotted time. So Steve, <laughs> off to you. No, it's, it was probably me eating up those two minutes, stumbling over your intro, sir. So we're all good. <laughs> Let's see That's if I do better now. Uh, so right. thank you. That was great. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please type them into your Q&A window now. And uh, we'll go to our first one. Saqib, thank you for your presentation. It must be a friend of yours. Uh, you currently provide access to weapon detection over relayed on CCTV. Uh, next part, has this type of analytic come up with some of your current customers? It's a very uh, common thing for public safety, right? Uh, uh, shot detection and things like that. Um, the best way to look at that is for us, that's absolutely um, transparent in the sense that that really is up to the camera. And what, how that comes across to us is essentially just an IP packet, right? Um, so if it's an IP camera with sensors that are all getting converted to the data and the alarms um, through IP, then we're just going to carry that back. So uh, we are neutral to that. And the answer to the original question is, yes, we do see that come across, but um, we don't have any concerns there. Uh, we just pass on the data that the camera sends, including the alarms. Okay. Uh, next question. I don't have a lot of experience with outdoor wireless. How can I determine if a connection will provide a fast enough data rate to support the frame rate and resolution for a particular project? Right. Uh, so Steve, that's a, that's a great question. And that's exactly what I uh, touched on with the uh, CN Vision companion tool available on the Cambium support uh, site. Uh, you download this tool and you essentially create a project. And in that project, you uh, plug in the camera information as well as your uh, a wireless uh, link information and we will come out, the tool will come and tell you, hey, uh, for this distance, for this link, you have this much capacity and this is what your camera needs and you are A, good to go or B, consider uh, changing the distance or change the camera resolution, et cetera, et cetera. So that tool is essentially the answer to this question. Okay, thank you. Next question, will the CN Vision work with all different manufacturers IP cameras? Yes, the answer is yes. Um, as I mentioned during the first question, 
we're, we're very transparent to what's coming across. So think of us as essentially that fiber thing we talked about, right? That wired, we're essentially a layer two bridge. So we will take any IP cameras traffic and send it through. So no, uh, no issues there. Okay, thank you. What is the acceptable latency you allow? Ah, great question. Now we're talking. Um, so on these types of links, you're gonna see anywhere uh, five to seven millisecond latency. Um, the beauty of that is it's not just about the latency, the jitter will be very consistent. Um, and I think that's where uh, some of the issues uh, come into for uh, PAC, uh, CCTV. So five to seven millisecond latency. I should also say that when I put up the slide on the Wi-Fi versus our protocol, one of the things we uh, take care in is in uh, retransmissions and packet loss. So we're very uh, resilient in terms of handling frame losses and making sure that the frames from the cameras are made, um, they make it across even in the worst case scenario. Uh, but I just wanted to add that to that uh, question as well, Steve. Okay. Uh, next question. Can we use this to provide multiple remote site internet and connections instead of numerous individual internet connections? Uh, can we use this to provide multiple internet connection instead of individual? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not necessarily following the question, but maybe I'll, I'll take a stab at responding here. Um, if you think about individual connections for internet, um, you're, you're, if you're looking at different buildings or different uh, commercial entities, then you would essentially create what I would call the hub and spoke type deployment, a point to multi-point deployment. So yes, you can take a single hub the internet that comes out of that hub, you can distribute it across multiple locations with individual clients at those locations. That is essentially what our service provider market does a lot. Um, it's what you would do in a point to multi points. Our best way to think about that is a hub and spoke model. I hope that answers the question. If not, shoot me an email. I'll uh, get, in, get into it a little deeper. Uh, actually, it just came through perfect, thanks. Oh, so, okay. yeah, good job. Uh, next one up, is there a backup if Wi-Fi goes down? Right. That's really up to you, whether you want to design a backup in this, right? Uh, first of all, goes down is a, is a very, um, uh, let's say, a Wi-Fi world um, statement. Um, when I talk about the resiliency in our network, we talk about the interference uh, fighting capability, the proprietary nature, we will rarely, rarely go down. So the link is not going to go down. Even if it degrades a little bit, because you're planning with some buffer, um, I'm not expecting that you're going to see issues with the camera side. Um, having said that, if you want to build some redundancy, build two links. Um, create two uh, redundant links uh, with the wireless stuff. So in case one goes down, you can always use and it falls back to the other one. You can use things like spanning tree protocol, enable that, and then all the traffic will switch from one link to another link. So there is a way to build redundancy. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Does the human behavior analytics work in wireless model? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, again, it's the same uh, similar question as the shot detection is that anything you do, the cameras are getting extremely advanced, right? Whether it's now with the temperature detection being a hot topic or uh, people counting or facial recognition license, all of these are functions of the cameras or the analytics you're doing on the back end, right? The data, the metadata comes through, um, you run BMS plugins and things like that and analyze the data. All of this is absolutely transparent to us. We don't care. We will pass, you know, facial recognition stuff, license plate recognition stuff. It's a packet to us. So uh, all that will work through CN Vision. Okay, thank you. Okay, that brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you for joining us. And once again, thank you to Sakita Med and Cambium Networks for their support. At the close. Thank sorry. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone. At the close of this session, a link to register for next week's session will pop up. Please be sure to register. We look forward to seeing you actually in two weeks, uh, as we will be off next week for Remembrance Day. Uh, so we'll see you in two weeks. Until then, be well.